Hello and welcome to A Course in Miracles workbook for students. Lesson 107. Truth will correct all errors in my mind. What can correct illusions but the truth? And what are errors but illusions that remain unrecognized for what they are? Where truth is entered, Errors disappear. They merely vanish, leaving not a trace by which to be remembered. They are gone because without belief, they have no life. And so they disappeared in nothingness, returning whence they came. From dust to dust they come and go, for only truth remains. Can you imagine what a state of mind without illusions is? How it would feel? Try to remember when there was a time, perhaps a minute, maybe even less, when nothing came to interrupt your peace, when you were certain you were loved and safe. Then try to picture what it would be like to have that moment be extended to the end of time and to eternity. Then let the sense of quiet that you felt be multiplied a hundred times and then be multiplied another hundred more. And now you have a hint, not more than just the faintest intimation of the state of your mind will rest in when the truth has come. Without illusions, there could be no fear. Without illusions, there could be no doubt and no attack. When the truth has come, all pain is over. For there is no room for transitory thoughts and dead ideas to linger in your mind. Truth occupies your mind completely, liberating you from all beliefs in the ephemeral. They have no place because the truth has come and they are nowhere. They cannot be found, for truth is everywhere forever, now. And this kind of reminds me of when the Course, it says you can't really describe the ego, but you can say what it's not. But when it's talking about the ego in the text, it says the ego really doesn't exist. It's it's kind of like these illusions that it's talking about here. They're nowhere. The ego is nowhere. It's like a shadow or the dark. What is the dark when the light is on? Where does it go? It doesn't go anywhere. It was never really there. Only the light is real. So that's the way sort of the truth is like the light that comes and dispels pain and darkness and illusions. And that's what we're uh, looking for today, is that truth to come and correct every error and every illusion, not outside ourselves, but in our mind. So let's read a little more and see what else happens when the truth comes into our mind. When truth has come, it doesn't stay a while to disappear or change to something else. It doesn't shift and alter in its form, nor come and go and go and come again. It stays exactly as it always was, to be dependent on in every need and trusted with the perfect trust 
and all the seeming, catch that word, seeming difficulties and the doubts that the appearances, appearances seeming, the appearances the world presents and genders. And they will merely blow away when the truth corrects the errors in your mind. So, when truth has come, it harbors in its wings the gift of perfect constancy. And love, which does not falter in the face of pain, but looks beyond it, steady and sure. Here's the gift of healing, for the truth needs no defense and therefore no attack is possible. Illusions can be brought to the truth to be corrected, but truth stands far above illusions and cannot be brought to them to turn them into truth. This is another concept you see in the Course is we bring illusions to the truth for them to be dispelled, exposed, um, for us to see that there's nothing to be afraid of. But what the ego would have us do is try to bring truth to illusions, just the opposite, and make them real. But there's no way that truth can be brought to make illusions real. So truth does not come and go, nor shift, nor change in this appearance now and then, in that evading capture and escaping grasp. It does not hide. It stands in open light, in obvious accessibility. It is impossible that anyone could seek it truly and would not succeed. And so today, we are seeking the truth sincerely and will succeed that's the promise that the course gives us truth will correct all the errors in our mind we do not have, have to ask for what we do not have it's there already we merely ask for what belongs to us that we may recognize it as our own. So the truth already belongs to us. And we just ask for what belongs to us so that we can recognize it. Today, we practice on the happy note of certainty that has been born of truth the shaky and unsteady footsteps of illusions are not our approach today. We are as certain of success as we are sure we live, sure we hope and breathe, and sure we think. And that's the kind of surety that the Course is presenting to us. And that's why we're learning to meditate and be still so that we can really encounter this knowledge of the truth. And it's not something that we just believe with blind faith because a book says it's true, but because we have stilled ourselves and we've listened and we've allowed. First, you know, we, we've had we have to admit that we're, we could be wrong. And what we think of as the truth, you know, and we look at our life, we look at what we've listened to and done with that the ego has instructed us and been our teacher, and we look at it, and we see what it really is. Once we allow it to be, we bring it to the light, we bring it to the truth, we see it for what it is, and then we can say, there must be another way. This really isn't 
making me happy. This really isn't giving me peace. So perhaps my thinking about this situation or my life is wrong. Perhaps I was wrong. And that opens the door for the truth to come in and for us to see and to make another choice. And that's what we're doing in these lessons. And that's what today is all about. That's how truth will correct all the errors in our mind. So we begin We are certain of success, it says, as we are sure we live and hope and breathe and think. That's pretty sure. You know, I'm pretty sure I hope, I'm pretty sure I breathe, I'm sure, pretty sure I exist and think. And we do not doubt we walk with truth today and count on it to enter all the exercises that we do today. You know, in the, the ego, I don't know how the ego works with you, but I suspect it's very similar to the way its voice acts in my head. And in situations like this, it often will try to place doubt in your mind, you know, this isn't going to happen. These words. You know, they sound nice, but mm, you, re you really can't expect that to happen. Not for you, anyway. I mean, this, this book, how do you really know it's true? How, how do you really expect these things to happen? And if I listen to that, I might be inclined to say, man, I'm, I'm doing this, but I don't really think it's going to happen today. I mean, it doesn't really matter if I miss an hour or two or... I mean, because it's probably not going to happen. But that's, that's not the way. If you hear those voices, that's just normal resistance to the truth. Because the... Our ego doesn't want to be exposed into the light. But there is an element of, you know, even beyond wanting it to be true, is kind of sometimes, even when we hear those voices just step out in any way, I'm going to believe it. I'm going to believe that I will have success today with an encounter with the truth. I'm not going to give in to thoughts of, oh man, this is probably not going to happen, but I'm just going to do it anyway. But no, we are going to believe today that we are going to have success and that truth is going to correct the errors in our mind. We're going to count on it. We're going to not doubt that we walk with truth today. And count on it to enter all the exercises that we do this day. I mean, right now, just stop all those thoughts, negative thoughts that you might be having. And just say to yourself, I'm going to count on truth being with me in every exercise I do today. And I'm expecting a miracle. Because I am entitled to miracles as a son of God. Begin by asking Him who goes with you, the Holy Spirit, upon this undertaking that He be in your awareness as you go with Him. 
you are not made of flesh and blood and bone. But we're created by the selfsame thought which gave the gift of life to him as well. He is your brother, and so, like to you, your Father knows that you are both the same. It is yourself with a capital S. It is yourself that you asked to go with you. And how could he be absent where you are? So here we are, we have the decision maker, ourself, that's identified with illusions, identified with the ego, identified with separation. And then we have our true self that we're trying to remember who we are so it's it's got both of those the decision maker the one that we are conscious of right now in, in this space and time or are in this video and then there's the the self that we are asking our true self our real self to go with us in this movement Toward the truth. And we're believing that our self is with us. That's kind of what this paragraph is saying here. It is yourself that you asked to go with you. And how could he, yourself, be absent from where you are? So our self is with us. Truth will correct all errors in your mind which tell you that you could be apart from him, yourself, your true self. You speak to him, your true self today, and make your pledge to let his function be fulfilled through you. To share his function is to share his joy. And remember, we're talking about our true self here. We're talking about it like it's someone else, but it's not. It's us that we've kind of lost contact with. His confidence, our true self's confidence, is with you. As you say, truth will correct all errors in my mind. And I will rest in him. I will rest in him who is myself. So we're going to have an encounter with ourself today. And the truth is going to erase or correct all the errors in our mind that have been like a veil and blocked us from seeing the truth about ourselves and then we're going to let him our true self lead us gently to the truth which will envelop us and give us peace so deep and so tranquil that you will return to the familiar world reluctantly and just from my um, experience, I would just say approach it just like this and and wait and allow yourself to bring you to the truth. And for me, It sometimes takes more than five minutes. Um, I know the Course says it 
do this five minutes every hour, but sometimes if I have the time, I'll just sit there until I began to really experience my real self. And for you, it may come instantly or in in one five minutes practice period, but for me, sometimes just saying it, it takes a little bit longer than five minutes for me. And, you know, that just could be me, but I just thought I'd throw that in there. So, if you've got the time, you may want to give it a little more than five minutes each hour. So we're going to let him, ourself, with a capital S, lead you gently to the truth, which will envelop you and give you peace so deep and tranquil that you will re return to the familiar world reluctantly. And I've had, I have that experience where you just, you just want to stay there in that peace and in that tranquility. You know, when you're kind of reluctant to let it go and go back and do the daily things and responsibilities that we have. And yet, you will be glad to look again upon this world, for you will bring with you the promise of the changes which the truth that goes with you will carry to the world. They will increase with every gift you give of five small minutes. And the errors that surround the world will be corrected as you let them be corrected in your mind. And that's kind of the way it happens. Instead of trying to change the world, the Course says that we change the way we see the world, our perception of the world, and we're doing that in these five-minute practice periods. And as we do that, when we go back into our situation, into our responsibilities and the world, we'll see it differently. And it may not have, you know, someone else looking on may not see that it's changed, or they may but it will be changed because our it is changed in our mind and now we're projecting a different perception of the world and so we'll perceive the world as different than before we had our encounter with the truth and allowed the truth to correct our perception. You know, the outside thing may not have exactly changed, but the way we see it and what we see will be different, you know, and we may, and where before we were upset, now we'll have peace and joy because we see the illusions for what they are. And we'll let go of our belief in them. And as we let go of our belief in them, that's what that was what was giving them power. And they just begin to vanish like clouds or smoke or shadows. Do not forget your function for today. Each time you tell yourself with confidence, truth will correct all the errors in my mind. And remember, these errors are illusions. You speak for all the world and him who would release the world as he would set you free. So as we're set free, the world is set free with us. So we're getting more into the actual 
practice of how this Course in Miracles works in our minds to change us and to change the world, our world. So I hope um, you have a wonderful day today and that you're able to experience real breakthrough in these five minute times and you're able to allow yourself to bring you to the truth and have these errors corrected in your mind today and my mind too so it's an exciting day exciting time bless you love to you we are one you're a part of me and I'm a part of you so I'll see you everywhere. I'll see you tomorrow. Mahalo.